I know nobody wants to talk about it, but the last official day of summer is just around the corner. And not long after that, we'll be seeing the end of daylight saving time. There's no S on that, by the way, which, as you probably know, I am dreading more than anyone else. Thankfully, GBH News culture writer James Bennett has us covered with a list of things to do and places to go to make the most of these last few weeks of good weather and sunlight in the latest edition of his newsletter, The Drop. I also have a lot of Emmy-related thoughts. We'll see if his match mine. James Bennett joins me now. Hello, James. How are you? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Okay, so we're not going to talk about the fact that my, one of my favorite comedians, Kenan Thompson, totally disappointed me because he was wildly unfunny. We are going to talk about one of the greatest moments in acceptance speech maybe ever. Here's, you've all seen this, Cheryl Lee Ralph wins it Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy for the great show, Abbott Elementary. Here's just a little piece of her acceptance speech. I am an endangered species, but I sing no victim song. I know Diane Reeves' Endangered Species. You know, that could have come off as wildly pretentious because she knew she was going to do that if she won. I thought it was one of the most powerful, wonderful moments I've ever seen in a in a in an award show. No? Oh, yeah. It's like, well, she's halfway to EGOT, which is yeah. great. And I kind of want... Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For uh, Dream Girls. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Tony. Yeah. yeah, so she's halfway there. Uh, what I thought was cool was that it was actually a like a speech it was like a like a like a it was very personal not to diss anybody that makes content happen but there's a rhythm that we expect if you get up there and then you just kind of say here are all the people that matter a lot to me which they do but it's also like what what does this mean for you personally right now and i feel that you know she was able to let us like look into what was going on inside with her and i kind of liked you know, how at the bottom they ran, you know, surely we will learn the thing. Exactly. And so, you got to, yeah, I thought it was pretty nice. So yeah. staying with the same show, and you talk about a rhythm you come to expect, one of the rhythms you don't come to expect is having to step over the body of another performer. Quinta Brunson, who's one of the co-creators of Abbott Elementary, if you haven't seen it, it is spectacular, uh, won for best writing for a comedy. Unfortunately, she had a step over Jimmy Kimmel. It's a long story. He was part of a bit. Prior to that with Will Arnett, he didn't leave, and he also never left while she's doing her acceptance speech. Here's a little bit of that. Jimmy, wake up, I won. <laughs> Jimmy? Okay, hold my phone. Um. I mean, you know, I like Jimmy Kimmel, I have to say. And she, talk about class, afterwards said how terrific he's been to her, that he was one of the first people to root her on when he saw the script. What was your reaction to that? Yeah, I don't, it, it, it sat with me for a minute, right? I don't think it was malicious. I don't even think it was ignorant. I think it just wasn't funny. You know, like you had mentioned, it did start off as a bit. And there were plenty of moments where the bit could have come to a natural conclusion before, you know, she even got up to the stage. Um, it, it 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 was it was just weird and not funny. I don't even want to say the word tasteless. It was just. You know. I think it was tasteless. Yeah, I yeah. think it was. I, I just have to say, I as I'm watching it and feeling like cringing, I'm wearing it. Would I have done the same thing? Were I him, I would have participated in the bit. Would I have stayed? I worry that I might have. What she could have done was, you know, if he's you know playing the bit that he's passed out, she could have like leaned over and just. <laughs> Hey, we've seen that in other award you shows. Know, other. One more, my f a local kid, kid, she's not a kid anymore, born in Boston, Norwell High School, Emerson is where she went to school. This is the great Jennifer Coolidge accepting her first Emmy Award. Here she is. I just want to say, um, you know, I took a lavender bath tonight, and um, right before the show, and it made me swell up inside my dress. And... Uh, I'm having a hard time speaking. And thank you to my amazing uh, team. Wait, hold on. No, this is a once in a lifetime thing and I'm, I'm full, I'm full. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Okay.
spontaneity. I, I think she's brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, there there were two things that stuck that stood out to me um, for that um, for that acceptance speech, and it's like the first is that playing off like with music is always a bit of a strange thing to me because if the room is reacting well, like who cares? You know, the, the, the network is gonna go over its allotted broadcast time anyways. That's the first thing. And also they were trying to play her off with um with Porti Volare, which like to me isn't playoff music. It actually complimented the speech quite well. I wouldn't have left either. I did think hit the road jack though to ultimately get her off. That was a kind of you know uh, great dancing though. It was oh yeah, great terrific. to embrace the moment. But. Now we're not gonna have, we don't have time to talk about how outrageous it is the Laura Lenny didn't win for Ozark. We'll talk about that another time. What's the drop? The drop. What is it or what's in it? What is it? What's in it? <laughs> yeah, the drop is just um, it's a roundup of things to do uh, in Boston um, that won't take too much out of your wallet. Uh, give me a couple of doing. examples for this month. For this okay. month, okay, yeah. So um, you know, the Jamaica Plain Historical Society is doing a series of walking tours in the neighborhood. For someone that's new to the neighborhood like me, it's you know what I would think would be a good opportunity to get to know the history of the space that you're in. So um, those tours meet on Saturdays, uh, and they head into October as well, and there are some Sunday dates. Um, there's also uh, a production of La Boheme, um, with the Boston Lyric Opera, but what's interesting about this production is that it's told in reverse. So, you know, the famed you know, you know, Puccini opera that, you know, Rent is based off of famously ends in, you know, the tragedy of consumption. Uh, tuberculosis, not mm -hmm. materialism, but I don't know, who knows. Uh, and this instead is told in reverse, so it has a bit of more, more uplift. How do people <laughs> find it? Uh, GBH.org slash the drop. And do you think, you're a new kid in town, relatively new kid in town, when I thought about it, your perspective might even be more valuable to the likes of me who's lived here for 35 years. No, maybe. I mean, maybe. I have to find stuff to do. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing with myself when I'm not. When I'm not working. But there's no preconceived anything though, because it's all sort of new to you. Which it's stuff that I'm googling, and I'm like, oh, that looks fun. I might want to check. I like it. Out. No, it's terrific. <laughs> you know, before you go, uh, you, I uh, uh, have been swimming my whole life. I never really learned how to do the crawl. Last year, I took lessons, and I would sort of half say I do the crawl. Let me pull up a few pictures of you learning something you didn't learn when you were a kid. That is riding a bicycle. There it is. That's There's right. some of them. <laughs> What's that about? What's that about? Why? Why now? And why not when you were a kidlet? Uh, the lore that I'm told is that when I was a kid, I was entrusted. Um, to learn how to ride a bike from my dad, but my dad didn't know how to ride a bike. That's a problem. And so instead of being like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, we just kind of lead it over that whole thing. But in this case, um, the orange line is shut down. Uh, oh, as orange I line inspired. Yeah, I live in JP. I'm like, I'm the Green Street stop. And so um, pretty far down, I have to get up here sometimes and I don't have a car. Um, could take the shuttle, could take the bus, but the most direct way would be to ride a bike. So I've been going up to Somerville to take lessons. You know, uh, when I was learning how to do the crawl, the thing I was most worried about was a little kid seeing me and laughing at me. Do you worry about that kind of deal or you're I did. more grown up in that? Yeah, I, I did for a long time, like maybe until my mid 20s. Um, and then I stopped caring, but I never really tried. And you know, in this context, you're with sometimes a group of people that are also in the same boat. Adults that need to learn. Oh, that's a very so. good point. Now, the last photograph. Can we put that up again with ET in his basket, just to, for a second? Why is ET? What, what is that? Like a reward for having successfully completed <laughs> the course or something? No. So, um, so Susan and Lucas runs um, this business out of her home. And uh, one of the other students in the garage who were getting the bikes out noticed that E.T. in a basket was there and was like, let's take E.T. out on a ride. Perfect. So, yeah, why well, not? Well, by the way, I, I hate to tell you, you're not the first. The first, actually, was my radio co-host, Marjorie Egan, with E.T. in a basket. Here's that photograph, by the way. I don't know if you've seen this before. That's right. That is exactly. <laughs> hey, before you go, let's find if you're the real deal. Did you bike to work today? No, I took a lift. Okay. <laughs> James, it's an honest man, James Bennett. Check out his newsletter, The Drop.